Hello everybody, this is Chet Bolingbrook, and as you join me, I am about to win the game Draken, which has been a long and frustrating journey. The opening screen is indicative of the fairly good graphics that the game has offered, which has been really the game's only uh, strong suit throughout my playing process. As we join the characters, one of whom is dead, we are watching the sunrise. And one of the things I like about the game, again, the graphics are pretty good, is how the, the sun comes up and, and goes down in the west and the sky changes color uh, as that happens. Uh, I'm beginning the game outside the castle where I started the game, coincidentally, and where also uh, happens to reside my last clue. And this castle uh, provided sort of an odd puzzle right at the very beginning of the game. You see the shark fin uh, going around. Well, if I try to cross the drawbridge at the wrong time, the shark jumps up and, and eats my character, um, which is unacceptable because I've already got a character who's dead and I cannot afford to revive despite having 102,000 184 gold pieces in his possession. Um, so I'm going to reload and take on that castle entrance again. So the trick is to wait until that shark just goes to the right of the drawbridge and then you can safely cross and enter. Every castle in the game uh, features these blocked doorways, and you have to choose the right rune here on the walls in order to open uh, the doorways. If you choose the wrong rune, some enemies show up to attack you, and so you've got to engage in melee combat. And you can see how primitive it is in this game. I simply activated the attack button here, and my characters just swarmed around the enemy and, uh, and attacked them until they were dead. There's no real tactics to... To combat at all, not even with the spells, because um, when you act it, when you change from uh, a melee attack to spells, as I'm doing down here in the corner, uh, the characters cast the spells instantaneously, and actually will keep casting them until they run out of magic points. Uh, there's effectively no way to change the spell in the middle of combat without turning off the attack, and it just gets very messy. Uh, it, it's very non-tactical the combat system in the game. Anyway, that's the correct rune, and so the force fields go off. Now this process took me a while to, um, uh, to figure out, uh, and I would missed a major area of, of this castle. But what it turns out, I first have to go through this door over here, and I'm going to have my wizard here cast the unlock spell on the door. For some reason I don't seem to have sound. There we are. And now my party can go through. And they're going to go through this door into this area here. And first they're going to have to deal with this dragon, but my, my characters are pretty high level, so um, it doesn't take them much to do that. Anyway, what I need to do here is this guy needs to get um, get a couple of messages from standing on these these ruins in the floor. Born of earth and water, the blue elixir lies in its father's belly. And then in this one, blessed be those whose lips are wetted at the holy fountain. With those two messages, I now have the option to go over here, or after they stop attacking, go over here and turn, you, you, there's no obvious thing to do here, but if I click the, uh, the use button, if the enemies will stop showing up, if I click the use button, it tells me that a head turns, I have to click it a couple of times, and that opens up a secret door in another part of the uh, the castle. This is the chamber where I encountered the Dragon Prince while he was still alive. And uh, he died a long time ago. I, I killed him to steal his, his gem, but he's got this suit of armor on the uh, in the corner, which I'm going to take because I can sell it and hopefully get enough money to resurrect um, my scout character, uh, Bar Barone. 
you can see the uh, inventory and character status sheets here, so typical selection of Dungeons and Dragons style attributes, except with education instead of wisdom. Uh, there are uh, different items that you can find and buy, and uh, the ones that you can wear and equip are over on the left. Um, I don't seem to have... Uh, this, this one character has a ring over here on the right. One of the things I don't like about the equipment uh, selection in this game is that you can't tell what anything does. So he has a ring, um, and this one I get lucky if I, if I wear it. Uh, the education uh, goes up to 13, so it's like a, a ring of, of education plus two. Uh, but there are plenty of other pieces of equipment, uh, rings, scepters that you find, and when you equip them, there's no uh, obvious benefit, or there's an ability that will show up down here, but the, game, the manual, nothing in the game explains what the abilities actually do. Uh, so it, it's been a, a frustrating part of the, um, the game playing experience. I have to keep adjusting the music and the sound because for whatever reason uh, the keyboard shortcut that I use to pause the recording um, is the same that this game uses to turn off the turn on and off the music and turn on and off the sound. So here in another part of the uh, the castle, uh, and a, again a fairly artfully composed room, the graphics are, are quite good here, is this grating which if I stand on it gives me the message that a mechanism tilts. Uh, and this one took me a while to figure out. He has to stay on it. And so with him standing there, these other characters... No, get back here. With my fighter character remaining there... I'm going to send my other characters or at least just this one, through the catacombs to see the secret door that opens up by virtue of my fighter remaining standing on the grate. So it's, a, it's actually not showing right now, but uh, if I switch back over here, then it just gave me that message again. Uh, and now back in this room, I can see the, new, the secret door that opened up. This door leads me into this catacomb area, uh, where there's these two crypts, and if I view them, I'll get a message. Almighty God. There were four rooms in four different castles like this, each of which had two crypts, um, and each of which had these two had two words or or two parts of messages on them, and uh, together they spell a phrase. The phrase is from your humble servants. To Almighty God, source of life and death, free the remorse. So it obviously that doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense or or gives a lot of clues, uh, and yet it turned out to be vital to winning the game to visit those four uh, coffins, those four sepulchers, and to uh, to get that additional that phrase. Uh, I couldn't. I apparently had to visit them after I had otherwise um, won the main game. Uh, and defeated the uh, the different dragon princesses princes, so it, it was very obscure that I had to return and um, and visit all of those those coffins. Here you can see one of the other more annoying factors of the game: the horrible pathfinding. Now this character is set to follow the lead character, um, and he needs to go through that door to the north. But he's in a place where I, apparently the AI can't figure out which way to take him around that pool to go through the door. So he'll just sit there and dither back and forth for. Uh, for almost ever, he just figured it out. But I've had other characters get stuck sometimes um, for you know, 20 or 30 minutes before I realize they're missing, and I have to go back and capture them. So the AI is pretty bad in the in this game, and the uh, the pathfinding is pretty bad. And very often characters will run into each other. They'll they'll continually block each other, and it makes combat very difficult. I have the, the DOS box cycles set very high right now, so when enemies appear, they barely flash on the screen before my characters react and, uh, and kill them. It's a little bit slower with the game's native speed. Having found what I came here to find, um, I can now leave the castle. And I'm going to go try one more time to resurrect uh, my scout character before I hit the endgame. Traveling through the wilderness 
when I hit enter, I switch between the, the view where I can actually see my party members and the view where we're in 3D continuously uh, scrolling view. And you travel most of the world uh, in, this, uh, in this way. When an enemy approaches, it will automatically draw my characters back out, and then I can control them individually again. Uh, bodies of water are deadly in this game. If, if you try to walk near them, your characters will sink and slowly take hit point damage until they drown, so you have to be very careful about that. Another aspect of the game that's deadly in, in a somewhat silly way is running into uh, gravestones that dot the wilderness and the roads. Let's see if I can find one here. Here's one. So when I run into it, turn off combat here. Oh, it's one of the weirdest creatures in the game just showed up. This weird stick figure. Anyway, I run into the gravestone. big demon dog's head appears and starts chomping on my characters. Now at low levels he was deadly, but at the levels I'm at now I can actually take care of him quite quickly. But it, it's just bizarre that doing nothing more than bumping into something creates this um, enormous battle that you have to fight. Looks like something else just showed up in the meantime. I, I missed what that was. Notice the moon at nighttime. The moon is always to the south, so it helps you orient yourself. There otherwise isn't any kind of um, uh, compass or uh, map or, or directions in the game, so you have to orient yourself by the sun and the moon in order to figure out um, which direction to go. Bounced off the tree a couple times there. So what I'm doing now is heading for uh, the weapon shop. I'm going the wrong way. So I can sell my excess goods and hopefully get enough cash to resurrect my last character. Got another 191 jade pieces just then, so every little bit helps. As I travel the road here, you can see me transition between two zones. There are four zones in the game, uh, corresponding with air, earth, fire, and water. I've just gone to the air zone, which for some reason they've depicted as sort of an arctic uh, tundra. This guy pops up all over the place in the game, and uh, sometimes has useful things to say, and other times doesn't make a lot of sense. The game never really explains who he is or why he's helping my characters. Another, another 902, hopefully that'll be enough. And so here I've reached the weapons uh, smith. Now, one of the more annoying things about the game, as we're going to see when I go to uh, heal this character who's dead, is that when you go to heal, the character who's going to be healed or resurrected has to be carrying all the gold necessary uh, to do that. But there's no place in the game that you can actually pool gold to a single character except right here in the weapons shop. Uh, so uh, that's primarily why I came here. It's not so much about selling things, which is what I'm doing now, uh, as it is uh, about being able to pool all my gold to that one person. So I'm selling some things that I really would like to hold on to, uh, but uh, the game is almost over, so I don't really need them, and I need the money more. Like most um, Dungeons & Dragons derived uh, games, in this one certain character classes can only wield certain weapons and armor. And uh, the game forces you to take all four character classes. So you have a fighter, a scout, a priest, and a mage. But it, it's a little bit weird some of the restrictions it puts on it. This, my mage, for instance, is capable of wearing this particular cuirass um, and my priest is capable of, uh, of wearing this one, but they can't wear each other's. Object forbidden to this class. And I, I don't know what the difference is between them. That uh, Again, there's no additional descriptors other than Curious. Alright, sell that. And now I'll pool all my gold to this one character, 109,000. 
Hopefully that'll be enough to heal him. If not, we'll just have to end the game with him still dead. The sun is setting off in the distance there. As I approach the temple, where hopefully I can heal my character. And unfortunately not. The, uh, the priest says, Riches cannot win your head, die, and without jade, stay dead. Meaning he does not have enough uh, jade. So, it was my own fault. I let him die, and I saved after he died. Uh, even though he was level 18, he's I think, the highest level of any of my characters. Yeah. And uh, the cost of resurrecting a character goes up considerably as the level increases. Cannot get the music to stay off. So we're just gonna have to win the game without him. It feels wrong somehow. I wish feel like all my characters should be alive at the end of the game, but uh, I know it's possible at least to, to end it uh, even though he's still dead. Here I have come to this flashing roadway which is not too far away from the starting area of the game and uh, and therefore uh, well it's deadly even now but it was very deadly back then wandering onto the roadway after we killed a crocodile inevitably produces an encounter with a dragon you can see the shadow growing and there he is and the dragons are more than capable of slaughtering my entire party, uh, even at the, the level that they're at. In fact, I'm lasting an unusually long time again. And, and so when you die, you get this error message, or I'm sorry, this end game message that, uh, that really makes you feel bad. It basically says that the world is going to come to an end since your party did not uh, uh, fulfill its destiny. So it turns out the secret to, uh, to surviving here is to first, well, first of all, to turn off my combat icon, and second of all, to remove and throw away all my equipment. Now, I don't know how I w was supposed to know this. I had to get this from a, uh, a walkthrough uh, online. Apparently, there was some message somewhere in the game in one of the castles that gave some hint about having to revisit the sepulchres and getting the messages and then disarming yourself uh, for the purposes of the the end game but I missed it or I didn't decipher it or something so put all my characters in their underwear and when I do that well last time the this little pathway changed color Nobody's got their stuff. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to reload and, and give that another try. I think the thing was I forgot to ha disarm my dead character as well. So, with everybody disarmed, and the dragons come down instead of attacking me. They give me this message. Here you are at the heart of the way of the gods. It all began here. Here all will end. By the tears of light, by the chaos primordial, by the holy fire of the thousand lives, may the forces of chaos be freed to light up the night and restore original order. May the four dragons melt and form one. Akin, that plots the fury of the waves. Fweekin, that guides the leaping flame. Winkin, that soothes the tempest's brow. Turkin, that moves the mountain. Basically air, earth, fire, and water there. Become a breath of fire to whisper life into conscience and wake the powers of the primordial dragon. As for you, mortals, your wisdom is matched only by your courage. Your epic struggle was just. Return to your land where magic is reborn that minds may once more see. The vessel of time will steer its eternal course. Teach your people that to fight dragons is to destroy their own destiny. The balance is fragile. You are its protectors. And then... It suggests that there's going to be a sequel. That last bit at the end of the game, and for some reason I accidentally 
equip myself into the DOS prompt, but uh, that last bit at the end of the game is um, uh, a reference to the uh, the game manual, which uh, the backstory is that we're on this continent to uh, figure out why magic has gone wonky in the human world after the last uh, dragon in the human world was slain. So um, th that that's really the only time that the game references the backstory. But uh, anyway, that's the conclusion of Draken. And uh, it, as I said, it was a long and frustrating game and a bit mysterious. And unfortunately, I had to result to uh, looking at a walkthrough to win. But ultimately, I did. So thank you for joining me. And we'll get back to Curse of the Azure Bonds.